What's up guys? You want to know something cool? Owning one of the first Model 3s is freaking cool. Owning a sub 100 VIN was even better. But it did come with challenges. It was very cool to ride around town here in Central California and I saw zero other Model 3s. I didn't see any. And it was very cool to ride around town and even have Tesla owners, other people that owned Model S and X's, stare at your car because it truly was, it was a unicorn. But owning such an early car, it had its challenges. There were small issues that needed to be fixed, like the trim on the side view mirrors cracked, and there were some rattles in the trunk that they needed to take care of, and they actually improved it in the newer cars. And you know, some of the trim didn't quite line up. I knew all those things going in that there were gonna be some issues, probably, with a VIN 89. So in today's video, I wanna compare a sub 100 VIN Model 3 to a VIN in the 78,000s and show you guys the differences and how Tesla has improved these cars over time. I hope you guys enjoy the video. So let's take a look at the differences between a very early VIN Model 3 versus a Model 3 with a VIN in the 78,000s. You'll notice some differences. Some things are small. And some things are large. Some things are very subtle while other things stand out pretty big. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you guys is the headliner in VIN 89. It came with the Alcantara headliner and only about the first 2400 or so cars that were made came with this headliner. It's very nice, uh, it was one of the things I loved about the car when I bought it uh, was this Alcantara headliner. And here we'll take a look at how the headliner looks now. It's more of a, they call it a textile fabric. And uh, it's not, I don't think it's quite as nice. It's still not bad, but it's not quite as nice. And then here is how my now Performance Model 3 looks. It came with the fabric headliner and I changed it to a black Alcantara. I just wanted to throw this in so you guys could see the uh, modifications I made to it. Here I want to show you guys the difference between the trim behind the steering wheel. Uh, in the VIN 89 car, they basically they kind of cut it off and they changed that. I'm not sure at what VIN they changed that, but they changed it in the later cars. In the VIN 89, here's how this trim piece looks. As you can see, it's cut off in this section and I'm not sure when they changed it, but here it is on the new cars. You can see that that piece, that trim piece goes all the way across there at the bottom. So at some point, I think Tesla changed the actuators in the doors. In the VIN 89, the doors have a slight delay when you try to open them. And I don't know if they changed that or when they changed that in the cars, but I wanted to show you guys the difference. Uh, Andrew, who is the current owner of VIN 89, noticed it. And I noticed it when I picked up my Performance Model 3. I noticed that the doors opened right away and there was no delay. So let's take a look at that. So let's look at a couple of examples. Here, when I walk up to the car, you can see how long it takes for the door to open. It's a real long delay. And then we took a couple of different shots of it when it happened again. There's still a delay, but it's not quite as bad. But here's my Performance Model 3 and see how it opens right up. 
So that's the difference. I think that they changed those in the later cars. We don't know for sure because I haven't tore the door apart, but I'm pretty sure they made an upgrade with the door actuators. So at some point, Tesla changed the trunk seal. Here on VIN 89, you can see the trunk seal. I tried to show all the way around so you can get a good idea of, of what it looks like. And then here is my Performance Model 3 trunk seal. And notice it has a little lip on it. And I don't know if that's supposed to just make it seal better or the reason that they changed it. And I'm not sure exactly which VIN, but I'm pretty sure that any VIN after mine probably has this, this newer trunk seal. In these clips, I wanted to show you guys the trunk garnish and how they changed the finish in the trunk. Here you can see on the red Model 3, there's no trunk garnish at kind of the top part of the trunk. And you can see in the underside here uh, how there's no trunk garnish. Also, if you take a look here, you can see that in the red Model 3, in the early VIN, they added a piece like a dampener up inside this area to, I guess it was for noise reduction. And I believe that they improved that on the newer cars because on my car, it doesn't have that piece. Also on my red model three, they had to come out twice to add like 3M double-sided tape up in that area to try to quiet down rattles. And on my performance model three, I've never had a rattle in that area, so I believe they improved that area over time. And here in my newer Model 3, the performance model, you can see they added a trunk garnish underneath the bottom. This is going to be hard for you to see but I tried to do the best I could. On the red Model 3, underneath where the trunk handle is, it is rubber. And when you grab it, you can feel it's rubber. But on the Performance Model 3, on this one, it is plastic. And I don't know exactly when they changed that, but they changed that at some point too. So this piece was really tough to get on camera. But if you look down at the front part of the dash, you can see that there's, you can kind of see down inside there and there's no like finished piece there. Like look right here, you can see down in there. Whereas if you look at my performance model three, you can see it's finished in that area. And I don't know when they decided to change that piece or add that piece in the manufacturing process. But the very early VIN model three uh, does not have that piece. You can see it right there. And then here's my Performance Model 3 finished. This is a small thing, but on the early VIN Model 3, you can see the bolts are not black. And I know it's a very small thing, but it is a thing that we noticed. And apparently on the new cars, they decided to use uh, black bolts in that area. So they don't stand out as much. They kind of blend in a little bit more. This is an issue I wanted to address and show you guys some different images on the build quality of the two cars. And this is an issue that gets a lot of attention with Tesla and people refer to their bad build quality. Neither one of them are, are, are bad, uh, but I do want to show you guys the differences in these. So here you can see the trim doesn't quite line up. It's a little bit off, uh, but the panel gaps look really good. and. I don't worry about panel gaps. I've seen very expensive cars have panel gaps. Uh, I don't think it's that big a deal, but I wanted to address it and show you guys that there are small differences in the build quality of these cars. Uh, like I said, neither one of them are bad, but here you can see the trim doesn't quite line up. 
but the panel gaps, you know, for such an early build car look very good. And here I wanted to show you guys the headlight and how the headlight sits down a little bit more toward the bottom. The gap all the way around the headlight is not quite even. It's not bad, but it's, it's better on the newer Performance Model 3 on the newer VIN. And here you can see the trim, how it lines up really, really well on the newer car. The panel gaps are, to me, they're perfect. Uh, I didn't find any build quality issues at all with my black newer VIN Model 3. And here's another picture of the trim and the gaps on the other side. You can notice that all the trim lines up really, really well. And then here's the headlight on the newer VIN Model 3. Notice how the gap all the way around the headlight is really even and it sits in there really, really well. So let's look at the differences in Generation 1 seats versus the Generation 2 seats. I'll put these side by side so you can see the differences. You can see that the bolster on the Generation 2 seat is a little bit thicker. There's more padding. Uh, to me, it's more comfortable for sure. Uh, the Generation 1 seats were okay, but the Generation 2 seats are definitely more comfortable. Also, on the Generation 2 seats, there's stitching all the way around the front side of the seat. And then here we can see the back seat. You can see how flat the Generation 1 back seat is. There's hardly any padding. It's just very, very flat. Whereas the Generation 2 seats, they improved it a lot. And here you can see the measurements and how much more padding there is on the Generation 2 seat. Well then, why? At some point, Tesla changed the key card. I'm not sure what VIN or around what VIN they changed it, but here you can see the red Model 3's key card. And then here is the black Model 3 key card, and you can see the differences. Basically, they just changed the graphics on the back side of the card. Here they are next to each other so you can see the differences. At some point, Tesla decided to change the T that is on the middle of the steering wheel from chrome to like a brushed metal. Here you can see on VIN 89, it is chrome. And here on the newer cars, you can see that it is a brushed metal. Let's take a look at the glass and how Tesla has changed the rear glass since they started manufacturing the cars. On VIN 89, you can see that the rear glass is completely UV coated. And at some point, Tesla stopped doing that and they started coating the rear glass about halfway down, like you can see here. And now you can take a look and see how my Performance Model 3, the VIN in the 78,000s, you can see how the rear glass is not UV coated at all. The only thing that is coated is the roof glass. In all three of these cars, the roof glass is all UV coated, but each of these cars has a different UV protection on the rear glass. Honestly, on my newer Model 3, I don't even notice a difference. Uh, maybe it's because my windows are tinted, uh, 20%, uh, but I don't notice a difference at all. At some point, Tesla decided to change the suspension in the rear wheel drive cars. We don't know exactly what VIN it was. We think it was about VIN 14,000 or 15,000. 
but it was about the same time they changed to the generation two seats and they changed the suspension and I don't have a car that has the newer suspension but I did want to show you guys some clips and show you guys here's the stock suspension on the current model threes and then just for kicks here's the lowered suspension on the red model three we used the moderate springs from unplugged performance and then here's the moderate springs for the performance model slash dual motor cars from unplugged performance both sets of these springs handle incredible I would not go back to a stock suspension uh, mainly because I don't like the wheel gap but I also like the way the lowered suspension and the way these dual rate springs handle but I just wanted to show you guys these So I decided to throw in this extra footage because we were having a good time and I thought you guys would enjoy seeing it. We decided to save the fun for last. Uh, we went out to an abandoned area and decided to show you guys the differences in acceleration between these two models. We were in an area that was completely abandoned, there was no one around and uh, we just basically went zero to 60 and just wanted to show you guys the difference in acceleration between a performance model 3 and a, an OG rear wheel drive model 3. It was fun and no one got hurt. Well, <laughs> some feelings got hurt, but other than that, it was fun. We had a good time. <laughs> Well that's it, that's all the differences that we could find between these cars. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. It was fun meeting up with Andrew in Kettleman City and going over all the differences and filming all the differences in these cars. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll do my best to respond. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.